Well, I, my, uh, my approach to sound is to use, I guess it's simple, but what my, my philosophy is that there are great sounds all around us and how we use them is what makes for great sound design. And it doesn't matter what the sound is, it matters how it makes you feel. So even for Brave, which was you know, one of the key things we had to design in Brave were the sound of the bear, mom bear. We recorded bears, that sort of, but this, I do this all the time. I've, I've had two dogs in my life, so I've recorded both dogs and used them for all sorts of things. The first dog was in Jurassic Park as a T-Rex, you know, and dogs are great. And so I found um, that my dog, uh, which doesn't sound quite like a dog, it just sounds like a grumbling creature, and the pitch down a little bit was perfect for a lot of the mom bear vocals in Brave. So how simple can you get? You know, I, I remember recording him even in bed because during the night he would make weird sounds while sleeping. So you, I could go to bed and I would turn on a recorder and just record. <laughs> so over the next hour or so, the dog every once in a while would go, rah, 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 rah. perfect bear sound for the movie. So simple is good. Um, well, Jurassic Park was groundbreaking in a lot of ways. It was groundbreaking for visual effects and... Um, and then it was at a time when we were trying to figure out ways to let audiences hear a fuller range soundtrack. Uh, so digital sound was just coming into theaters. DTS was a format that the very first DTS movie was Jurassic Park. And around the same time, Dolby Digital was coming out. And so it was, it, it was, what was great is becoming more common for audiences to hear a movie well. So that means you could take advantage of it. So in Jurassic Park, it's a perfect movie to take advantage of a fuller range sound track um, because you got dinosaurs roaring. So you want loud and you want it to surround the audience and you want it to be dynamic. And um, it's, it, it's funny how knowing that's, that so many people will hear it well helps you uh, be inspired to do good work when you're creating the sounds for the movie itself, because you know people will hear it right. Um, so then that's, uh, but that was a, a fun sound design job because it, there were so many different dinosaurs that had to be created, and so uh, I, uh, I had a, that was like a, a candy store for sound design. So uh, Stu was the name of the character, which is short for student to me. So, um, and I, I wanted to make, uh, and I did sound for the first Pixar movies, Luxo Jr. and Tin Toy and Knick Knack and those. And I love Pixar short movies. So when I went to Pixar, the first thing I wanted to do was make a short. And um, it was also a way for me to learn about, because I didn't have an animation background. I had a sound background, live action filmmaking. So I had to learn about animation. Um, but the way I, I saw that, because I, I had this idea of combining driver's education and alien abduction. So I put those two things together. Um, but really what I was making, one of my favorite things in the world are Laurel and Hardy movies. So I was really making a Laurel and Hardy movie with a big guy and a little guy. <laughs> so to me, that's, I was getting to make an old-fashioned comedy. Well, my, my biggest challenge is I had to learn a lot. So, but luckily I was at Pixar where people are so great and there are a lot of uh, you know, I had to learn how to think in terms of animation. Luckily, the, sometimes they would show me how they would do all the you know, computer animation and how they would do the technical stuff. And luckily, I didn't need to know any of that stuff. I could just say, you know, make it like this, and um, they could do it magically, and I didn't have to be technologically. It's a good thing about being a director. You don't actually do anything. You tell people, you talk to other people, and get them to do something great. Um, so. Uh, that was the, the, the challenge was learning the process, but really the, the, what I, um, you know, the, the challenge for me was trying to learn to be a director, which is having worked with many directors, what I like is for directors to be inspiring for you to do, to help them make their movie. So every person who works on a movie brings their own thing to it, and the director's job is to communicate what the movie is about and what they're looking for and then giving you opportunities and freedom to do what you do well. And so I, I like doing that.
and I, the last three Studio Ghibli movies that have re been released in the U.S., I've directed the English language version, which is its own, completely different than, say, Lifted when creating the whole movie. So this is Studio Ghibli. They have a movie that exists. My job is to stay true to that movie, but still make it entertaining and make sense and, and be as beautiful for the English language audience as it is for the Japanese language audience. This is something that goes on. I mean, people do this to movies I've worked on. They get translated all over the world. It's a tough job. So I've learned how tough it is by doing it these three times. Um, but I think of it as, you know, take this movie. We, we, we cast it and we, we work hard on the script so that it both syncs to the animation but is funny, it makes sense, we get to know the characters, it's dramatic, it's emotional. And there are differences both culturally and language we try to account for. But I love, love, love working with actors. And luckily, so many actors, great actors, we get great, great cast for these movies because they love the movies. They love Spirited Away and Totoro. And it's just, there's a love for those movies. So we get, um, on the last one we had, uh, you know, uh, Bo Bridges and Bruce Dern and, and uh, Gillian Anderson and Jamie Lee Curtis. And, and before that, I got Carol Burnett and Amy Poehler and these wonderful actors who do this because they love the movie. So for me, what a great opportunity to work with the kind of actors, that, you know, how else would I get to work with them?